be talking about um, expressions. And so when you, when you talk about expressions, we either have like terms or unlike terms. And so for like terms, um, like terms have exactly the same variable. So if we look at 2x and negative 7x, they both have an x to the first power. So that's what makes them like terms. Okay. If we um, look at negative 8x squared and 3x squared, they both have x squared. Okay. Since they both have x squared, they are considered like terms. Here, both of these have an x and a y. So since they both have an x and a y, like terms. This has x to the second y, x to the second y. Since they both have an x to the second y, they are like terms. This one has an understood one in front of it. They both have an x, so they're like terms. Now, if we come over to the side that says unlike terms, if you look at their variables, one has an x and one has a y, so they're not the same, so that's why they're unlike terms. Both of these have x's, but one is x squared and the other one is x. So since they're not to the same power, they're unlike terms. We look at the next one. This is xy. This is xz. They do both have an x, but then this has a y and that has a z, so they're not like terms. This one, they both have an x and a y, but the first one is x squared y and the second one is xy squared. The variable part has to look exactly the same. This one has one has an x to the first, and the other one doesn't have an x at all. Or we could say it has an x to the zero, but sometimes that confuses people. So this number four has a special little name. It's called a constant. And the reason it's called a constant is because it's never going to change because it doesn't have a variable beside of it. Okay, so what we're going to start looking at is also some names. So if I only have one term, it is called a monomial. I know that you kind of study root words in um, middle school, at least my daughters did. So mono means one. So if two things are multiplied together, that is considered one term. A binomial, kind of like a bicycle, so it represents two. So what that means is you have two different terms, and they have a plus or a minus sign in between. So the terms are divided by adding and subtracting. Then we have a trinomial, which is kind of like a tricycle. So it's the same thing. We have three terms, and they have pluses. They could also have minuses in between. Then after we get to do a trinomial, we just call the rest of them polynomials. So if we had anything that had more than three terms, four terms, five terms, six terms, seven, seven terms, they'd all be called a polynomial because poly means many. Okay, and this one has four terms and they are divided by plus and minus signs. So what we're going to look at today is adding and subtracting polynomials. So polynomials, remember, are three or more. And sometimes they also call them if they just have three terms. Polynomials is what they use for all of them, even if they have two or if they have three, but definitely if they have more than three. So the example is we're going to add this and we're going to add this to it. So what we have to do is we kind of go back to those like terms. So since 3x squared and 4x squared both have an x squared, they're considered like terms. I usually like to like line mine up. You don't have to line them up if you don't want to, but also do remember that that x squared has an understood one in front of it. So 3x squared plus 1x squared is going to give me 4. If I combine my next like terms, I got 5x and negative 5x. So when I combine those, they are like terms because they both have x's. And so when we combine those, we get 0. Then the negative 3 and the positive 1, those are just basically whole numbers. And they're also called constants. And constants will just be like adding regular numbers. So negative 3 plus 1 is going to give me negative 2. So my answer for this one is 4x squared minus 2. 
Okay, and then if you ever used algebra tiles, I think they tried to make those work, but the green ones are the x squares, and the purple ones are the positive fives, and the red ones are the negative fives, because they're going to like take it away from them, then you have to like borrow. Um, but let's look at this one. So if we wanted to add this together, we got to be really careful because it tried to trick because... 3x and negative 2x are not like terms. So you got to go through there and you got to make sure that you pick the ones that are like terms. Now, what I would suggest is to rewrite it. See how this is rewritten? And what that's called is it's called standard form and it's called descending order. So what descending order means is you look at the exponent and you always put the exponent with the highest power. So we've got x to the second, that's x to the first, and then we have our constant. We always write it in that order. So when we're adding them together, we can line them up again. And these are like terms. So if we have a positive 4 and a negative 2, we do end up subtracting them. Those are our integer rules. We don't have a like term with 3x, so we just bring it down. And we have a negative 9 plus 10, so that gives me a 1. So now we've got to be really careful because this says we want to subtract this from this. So what that means is we're going to have x squared minus 4 minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 6. Now what I like to do on this one is I like to, when I have a little subtraction sign, what I do is I leave my first one as x squared minus 4, then I change this to a plus sign, and then I change the sign of everything inside. So when I change the sign, what happens is I changed it to addition. And so if I change it to addition, it's exactly like what we just did. So I'm going to put my x squared. I don't have an x term, so I'm just going to put minus 4 or I don't want to leave anything out, so I can put 0x like they did up here. Then we're going to take everything else and line them up. So that's a like term, that's a like term, and that's a like term. So x squared, remember there's a 1 in front of there, that gives me a negative x squared. We never put the 1, it's understood. That gives me minus 4x plus 2. We are combining our like terms. Now, these are some questions that you would have. And so on this one, we got 5a plus 4. And see the little subtraction sign. So what I would do is change that to plus and change that to minus 5a minus 3. So that's going to be minus 5a minus 3. My 5a's cancel, and so I'm left with 1. Here we got to be careful because we got 12x to the 5th. So we've got 12x to the 5th. We do not have an x to the 4th, so we need to put 0x to the 4th. We do have, and all of those are a's, aren't they? <laughs> so we got 12a to the 5th. We do not have an a to the 4th, so we're going to put plus 0a to the 4th. We do have an a to the 3rd, so we're going to put negative 10a to the 3rd. We do not have an a to the second, so we're going to put 0a to the second. We do have an a, so we put minus 6a. Now, we've got a subtraction sign, so what I'm going to do is change that to plus, and then all of these change signs. So we've got a negative 10a. So I'm going to put that negative 10a under the 6a, negative 6a because they're like terms. Then we have 2a to the 5th. And I butchered this, so I'm going to make it better so you can definitely see it's a to the fifth. So we got 2a to the fifth, and now it's positive because we changed it. And then we have 14a to the fourth, so we would put 14a to the fourth underneath here. And then 12 plus 2 is going to give me 14a to the fifth. 0 plus 14a to the fourth is going to give me 14a to the fourth. 
I don't have anything down here, and I could put 0, a to the third if I want to, plus 0, a to the second. So then that's going to be giving negative 10, a to the third. This gives me just 0, a to the second, and that gives me 16, a. Now, 0, a to the second, we're not going to leave it in there. We're going to drop it off. And so then that's going to be 14a to the 4th minus 10a to the 3rd minus 16a. So that's going to be my answer. And then that is, again, these are like lots of different questions. Now, um, I want to make sure that we get to multiplying a monomial by a polynomial. And we've done this before with just a number, so we're going to be using the distributive property, okay? So we did this, I think, in the first unit. So if we had 4 times x plus 2, we do 4 times x, which is 4x, and then plus 4 times 2, which is 8. But these are going to get a little bit harder in that we're going to use our exponent rules, which is if we multiply exponents, we add them. We add the exponents, okay? So I'm going to kind of walk through this problem. So we got negative 4a to the third times 3a to the third minus 5a squared plus 2a minus 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that negative 4a to the third and we're going to multiply it. Now this is just an extension of what we've done before. So I'm going to write it out the long way so you can just sort of see where it comes from. You do not have to write it out the long way. But we're going to take that negative 4 and we're going to multiply it by 3a to the third. So if we multiply that, we're going to multiply our regular numbers. So we got negative 4 times 3, which is negative 12. And then we have a to the third times a to the third. So we add our exponents and we're going to have a to the sixth. Okay? So we did the 3a to the third. So now we've got to go back and get a different color, and we're going to multiply negative 4a to the third times negative 5a. So our next little part is going to be negative 4a to the third times negative 5a squared. So that when we multiply that, we get a negative 4 times negative 5, which is 20. a to the third times a to the second, we're going to add them, and we're going to get a to the fifth. Then we're going to do our, we've done our negative 5a squared. So now we're going to multiply negative 4a to the third times 2a. So you're going to have negative 4a to the third times 2a. So we're going to do negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8a. We've got to be really careful because there's a 1 there. So we're going to add our exponents so we get a to the fourth. And then the last one that we're going to do is we're going to do negative 4a to the third times negative 6. So we have negative 4a to the third times negative 6. So negative 6 times negative 4 is going to give us a positive 24. And we don't have another a, so that's just going to end up being a to the third. Now, you do not have to write it out like that. Most of the time, students get to where they can just multiply again in their head and they say negative 4 times 3 is negative 12 then I add my exponents okay so this also wrote it out the long way but you can start trying to skip that so if we look at this one pause the pause the video try it and then come back so when we do this one we could write it out the long way you didn't have to so you're going to take this and multiply it times this so you're going to have 16c to the 5th, d to the 2nd. And then we're going to take that negative 9c to the 7th, d to the 3rd, and multiply it times this one. So you're going to have negative 9c to the 7th, d to the 3rd. And we're going to multiply it by negative 5c to the 2nd, d to the 5th. Okay? So we're going to multiply 9 times 16. Now, if you don't know what 9 times 16 is, just write it out. 9 times 6 is 54. 9 times 1 plus 5 is 14. So we get negative 144 because we multiplied our regular numbers. Then we're going to multiply c to the 7th times c to the 5th. 
So we add our exponents. So 7 plus 5 is going to give me c to the 12th. Then we do d to the 3rd times d to the 2nd. We add our exponents so we get d to the 5th. Then we're going to come over and we're going to multiply negative 9 times negative 5, which is a positive 45. c to the 7th times c to the 2nd is going to be c to the 9th. And d to the 3rd times d to the 5th is going to be d to the 8th. Now, when I get to this point, um, if I look at the variable part, they both have c's and d's. But this is c to the 12th, d to the 5th. And this is c to the 9th, d to the 8th. So they're not like terms. So my final answer just has to be negative 144c to the 12th, d to the 5th plus 45c to the 9th, d to the 8th. And we always write our variables in alphabetical order. Try this one. Pause it, then check your answer. So you're going to have 8c to the 2nd, d to the 2nd, times 3c to the 4th, d to the 3rd, plus ac to the 2nd, d to the 2nd, times 10 c to the third d to the fourth. Then we're going to have plus a c to the second d to the second times 11. So we're going to go back. We're going to say 8 times 3, which is 24. c to the 2 plus 4, which gives me c to the sixth. d to the 2 plus 3 gives me d to the fifth. Plus, we're now going to do 8 times 10, which is 80. c to the 2nd times c to the 3rd, which is c to the 5th. d to the 2nd times d to the 4th, which is d to the 6th. Then we're going to have 8 times 11 is 88. 11 doesn't have any variables, so then that's just going to be c to the 2nd, d to the 2nd. And if we look at the variable part, they all have c's and d's but they are raised to different powers. So that right there, I can't combine any like terms because they're not any. That's my answer. Okay, try this one. So you got 3cd to the fourth times 2c to the fourth um, plus 3cd to the fourth times negative 5c to the second d to the second plus 3c d to the fourth times negative 18 d to the fourth. All right, so we're going to multiply our numbers. So 3 times 2 is 6. Be really careful because that's c to the first. So we're going to do 1 plus 4 is c to the fifth. And then the d to the fourth doesn't have a d right here, so it's just d to the fourth. So then we're going to say 3 times negative 5, which is negative 15. That's c to the first, so we add our exponents. So 1 plus 2 is c to the third. Then we have d to the fourth times d to the second, which is d to the sixth. Then, mm, I don't know what happened there. So then we're going to move over to here, and we're going to say 3 times negative 18. So we know that it's going to be negative, and this right here is a 6. Let me get back and do that. All right, so then we're going to say 3 times negative 18, which is negative. 18 times 3, 3 times 8 is 24, 54, so we're going to get minus 54. C to the first, there's not another C, but we don't write a 1 as an exponent in our final answer. And then we have D to the fourth times d to the fourth, which is d to the eighth. If we look at the variable part, there are nothing in common. They both have c's and d's, but they're not to the same power. Can't combine any like terms. That's my answer.